One of the questions we get asked uh, quite often is how do you create bias cut cloth? Cloth that isn't cut um, on the, the thread weave of the fabric, something that's cut across the grain. Uh, a lot of women's fashion are, is created with uh, patterns that use these bias cutting methods. Now, maybe a little bit hard to understand, it's you know just by describing it so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you a very simple example here to begin so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build out a very simple scene just back out there and I'm going to build two panels of cloth so I'm going to build two identically sized rectangles here to begin with and what I'm going to do is then convert them into editable splines and go through the normal process of setting them up for cloth. So I'll make all of their vert corners. I'll break all their vertices. And I'll do the same one for this one as well. So editable spline, vertex subobject mode. They become corner verts and they all get broken. So now I've got two panels. Now if I apply Garment Maker on top of it, You'll notice that, let's bring this up full screen, that I now got this Delaunay mesh that describes the, the cloth fabric itself. Well, it based on the orientation here, um, as well as the pattern cloth effects derives the threads and how they're interwoven. And so that's that's something important to consider. In other words, right now, the threads that make up this fabric or this this simulated fabric run perfectly vertically and perfectly horizontally. Even though this mesh is not uh, designed that way, it is, it's designed to give the randomness that you would get in f as far as folds and creases in cloth. So right now we've got threads running horizontally and threads running vertically. But what's, what, do, what happens if we want to create a piece of uh, fabric that isn't cut this way, that has maybe threads running at angles? Well, we can do that too. Let's delete this off here. And now normally when you're creating a dress or some sort of a, an object, you're going to have multiple pieces of uh, multiple splines to create the pattern. Uh, another important tip to remember is that the, the piece that you select when you do the attach defines the, the on bias. In other words, if I've got this big imaginary piece of fabric out here, let's just quickly draw one out here. If I've got this big piece of fabric and I want to cut these panels out of it. Right now they're both being cut on bias. They're both being cut, you know, the, the threads run this way and this way. Uh, if I want to change that, I think I've kind of given it away a little bit. Let's go into vertex, or actually let's go into uh, spline subobject mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the center and I'm going to rotate this panel. Let's just turn on angle snap. Whoops. That's nifty. Ah, I didn't do that. Okay, so angle snap turned on. That took a few attempts. Let's go 45 degrees as my my bias. So now looking at this piece of fabric, this imaginary piece of fabric right here, I've got one panel that is perfectly cut on bias, and then I've got another piece of fabric that's cut off bias. It is biased. The, the threads are going to run diagonally through it. So I'm going to get a different look and feel out of the same panel. So let's show you what I mean. I'm going to delete that because I no longer need it. I've now got this editable spline ready for Garment Maker. So I'll throw Garment Maker on here. Now you'll notice that the, the Delaunay mesh on both of these looks identical and, and it should. It, it's not going to give you any kind of visual representation that it's been cut at a different angle but it's going to behave differently so be aware of that. Let's go into um, panel subobject mode and I'm going to rotate this guy back to his normal position and then I'm going to select both of these panels and let's go ahead and rotate this up and move them so that they're underneath the the panel a little bit so like that and now I'm ready for cloth effects so I'll throw cloth effects on here next 
and I can tell it to use the rectangle and I'm just going to say to use the default and I'm going to set the damping down a little bit and then I'm going to go into group sub-object mode it's a little hard to see unless I zoom in I'm going to select all the top verts here and maybe I've selected a little a few too many so let's burn those 